most investors think about collective investment schemes, or maybe better known as funds, as something that is very complicated. In actual fact, investing in a collective investment scheme is me and you, the investors, pooling our money together, and this money is managed by a professional fund management company. So this looks very simple. The complicated part is the actual allocation of that money, which is done by the fund manager, who will allocate those investments, those pool of investments from all the investments together into different, maybe fixed income, maybe equities, and maybe a mix of both. This is according to investment objective of the fund, which is normally outlined in the fund prospectus. Investors then should expect some kind of return, and return is generally coming either from dividends paid within the assets of the underlying fund, it could be interest from cash accounts, or even capital growth in the case mostly of equities. In some instances, there are also collective investment schemes, funds that pay dividend on a periodic basis. The most important thing also is to consider that you have to pay some kind of fees, some initial fees. Most funds will charge an initial fee on application, and in some cases there is also an exit fee that may apply when you redeem your investment. So generally people buy units in a collective investment scheme because they want a simple way of investing in a diversified portfolio with the security of having someone that is watching it. Collective investment schemes are very popular with investors as they offer a wide range of benefits. Mainly the diversification aspect of the fund, having exposure to different fixed income positions, to different equity positions, geographical allocations, sector allocation, gives it the diversity that investors need to spread out the investments in the best possible way. This is done by the fund manager, what we call the expert, the expertise that's behind the fund, which is one of the most important aspects of having a collective investment scheme. Together with the fact that accessibility to certain markets with very low minimums, say I want to start investing in a fund. Most people think you need to be some rich person, you might need to have a capital sum. That's not true, you can start investing by 50 euro by investing regularly on a monthly basis. So that will give you accessibility at low levels to different type of sectors and markets. And then there's also the liquidity factor of, of holding an investment in a collective investment scheme that you can withdraw your money, redeem your money whenever you want, or you can even do additional investments in the fund at any point in time of the life of the fund. So in a few words, the most important aspects are diversification, the expertise behind managing the fund, the liquidity, and also that they are so accessible to the normal people that don't need to have a large sum of money to start investing. Risk is sometimes perceived as a negative word, but in actual fact it could also open opportunities, especially when it comes to investing. Normally we say the higher the potential return, uh, returns are, the higher the risk is. So if I had to invest into equities, it is normally perceived to be of higher risk than investing into bonds, so an equity fund is higher in risk than a bond fund. But some general specific risk, like market risk, which is the entire market has gone down or up, like what happened in 2008 and early 2009, where we've seen a crash in the market. Most people were selling, not buying. Um, there is also what we call interest rate risk, when the, Euro, the central banks decide to lower or increase the interest rates to control the economy. Um, in recent years, we've seen low levels of interest rates never seen before by the ECB, the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England. There is also the credit risk, which is the risk behind normally bond funds and bonds holdings in a high yield fund, which is the risk that you have when you buy a bond, is that uh, if the bond defaults, if the um, bond holder um, cannot get his money back because the bond issuer can repay either the dividend or even the capital, there is also that kind of risk. Then you have the country risk, which is um, you either have a developed country or maybe an emerging country. Even within Europe itself, Germany is perceived to be of lower risk than peripheral Europe, and obviously currency risk. 
if any of the underlying investments of the collect investment scheme, the fund, or even the fund itself, is denominated in a currency other than your local currency, then there is also the risk that you might earn money from the underlying investment, but there's the movement in the currency that will fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis. So risk consideration is very, a very important factor, but not risking is also a risk in itself. We've explained what a fund is, the benefits, the risks involved, but the main problem is that there are so many funds available on the market that it's sometimes very hard to decide which are the best fund or funds to invest in. So I would always suggest that you seek financial advice from a professional, from someone that is a licensed financial intermediary that can help you identify who you are, what kind of risk do you want. You're a conservative investor, you're a medium investor, or you're, you're an adventurous investor. Even the time element plays an important role. What age are you? Um, what kind of investment do you want? Do you want something that gives you growth? Something that gives you income? A mix of both? So there are so many investment options from where which to decide that I'm sure you will need financial help. But most importantly, ask a lot of questions and read all the information, especially the prospectus, and in case of USITS funds, the KID document, which is just a two-pager where you can find all the needed information about the risk, about the investment objective, because the investment objective of the funds or of the whole portfolio must match your investment goals and your investment objective. That is crucial before investing. So the main thing is seek professional advice.